Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is Physics Chapter Thirteen, Modern Physics Video Seven. Today's topic is the standard model of particle physics and fundamental forces. Objectives are: be able to state standard model of particle physics, be able to describe the fundamental forces in nature. First, let's take a look at standard model. The standard model of particle physics. The standard model is a theory of elementary particles and how they interact. When we think of an atom, we generally think of a nucleus made up of protons and neutrons, surrounded by a cloud of electrons. If we look deeper into the heart of the nucleus, we find that the protons and neutrons are made up of more fundamental particles called quarks. Quarks, like electrons, are considered to be one of the elementary particles. That make up our universe. The standard model categorizes all the elementary particles into either matter particles, otherwise known as fermions, or force carrier particles, otherwise known as gauge bosons. Fermions are divided into quarks and leptons. There are six quarks: up and down, charm and strange, top and bottom. There are six leptons: electron, muon, tau, electron neutrino, muon neutrino, and tau neutrino. Fermions create matter, and the gauge bosons carry the forces between the matter particles. Gluons mediate the strong force between the quarks, holding them together within the protons and neutrons. Gluons also mediate the strong force between the protons and neutrons, holding them together within the nucleus of the atom. Photons are particles of light which carry the electromagnetic force that holds the electrons in atoms. W and Z bosons carry the weak nuclear force. And they are involved in some forms of radioactivity, and they play a role in how the stars burn. And finally, the Higgs boson is a corresponding carrier particle of the Higgs field, which is a quantum field that permeates all of space. Particle interactions with the Higgs field impart particles with their mass, and the Higgs boson is the local excitation of the Higgs field. If you like my content and want to help me make more science. So the standard model of particle physics, including,、um, describes the universe in terms of matter and force. So I like the force carrying particles. The matter particles have associated antimatter particles, such as antielectrons and antiquarks. So there are twenty four fermions. So fermions, these are matter particles right over here. Okay, up, down, charm. Strange top and bottom, and here is the leptons, electron, muon, tau, and electron, neutrino, muon, neutrino, and tau, neutrino. And here are the force carriers, or called bosons. So the force carrier is the、um, is responsible for the forces between the particles. So there are four known forces. These are called fundamental forces. Two of these forces are only seen in atomic nuclei, and other subatomic particles. They are strong nuclear force and weak nuclear force. Aside from gravity, all the microscopically observable forces, such as friction force or、um, normal force, they are all the results of electromagnetic forces. So the four fundamental forces are gravitational force. Electromagnetic force, strong nuclear force, and weak nuclear force. By the way, in the standard model, gravitational force does not belong the standard model. Only these three forces. Now scientists are still working on gravitational force. They can't、uh, seems to、uh, work it out. Not yet. So the weak nuclear force is another very short range of force that we haven't talked about. Right, that causes transformation of protons to neutrons and vice versa, along with other radioactives.、Uh, gives off photons and other particles,、uh, other radioactive phenomena. Now let's take a look at the three forces we have kind of learned. Gravity. Gravity is a force of attraction that acts between each and every particle in the universe. It is the weakest of the four fundamental forces. It is always attractive. It pulls matters together, causes you to have a weight, apples to fall from the tree, and keeps the moon on its orbit around Earth. The planets confined 
in their orbits around the sun and binds together galaxies in clusters. Electromagnetism or electromagnetic force determines the way in which electrically charged particles interact with each other and also with magnetic field, fields. This force can be attractive or repulsive. This force holds the atoms together. This force also governs the emission and absorption of light and other forms of electromagnetic radiation. The strong nuclear force actually binds together the protons and neutrons that compri comprise atomic nucleus and prevents mutual repulsion between positively charged protons from causing them to fly apart. Strong nuclear force interaction is the underlying source of vast quantities of energy that are liberated by nuclear reaction that powers the stars. So one more force is the weak nuclear force that we haven't talked about. Let's take a look at the weak nuclear force. series on the four fundamental forces of physics. A mere four forces that make the whole universe work. And in this installment, we're talking about a force that acts over very, very teeny, teeny tiny distances, the weak force. Without it, the sun would not shine, we would not have elements like radium or plutonium, and we wouldn't have carbon-14 dating. All of these things require one particle to turn into another particle through particle decay. Remember strong force? It acts on a proton or a neutron to hold its component quarks together, and one way that we describe quarks is by their color. It's just a characteristic of a quark, sort of like a charge is a characteristic of an electron. Weak force acts on quarks, just like strong force does, but instead of changing its color, it changes its flavor. And there are six flavors of quarks, lemon lime, root beer, hazelnut, sorry. Seriously, you've heard of these, uh, up, down, strange, charm, top and bottom. Up quarks have a slight positive charge, while down quarks have a slight negative charge, and they both have the smallest masses of all the quarks. The other quarks have charges too, but they're all much heavier and much rarer because they quickly decay into up and down quarks. Up and down quarks are what most stuff is made of. Neutrons are made up of one up quark and two down quarks, while protons are two ups and one down. Now the weak force changes quark flavor. So when a quark inside of a particle changes, that changes the whole identity of the particle. This is crazy stuff to me, to think that you can actually, like, just through this force, change a proton into a neutron. It's nuts. In addition to quarks, and thus neutrons and protons, weak force can also interact in a similar way with leptons, the most famous of which is the electron, but also including neutrinos. And as with all fundamental forces, the weak force involves an exchange of particles called force carriers, which are these weird, barely existing particles that convey forces between other particles. Weak force has two force carriers, the W bosons, which can be either positively or negatively charged, or the Z bosons, which have no charge. Now, let's watch some weak interaction at work. How about we make a neutron change or decay into a proton. To do this, we're going to need a neutrino passing by. So remember, neutrons are one up quark and two down quarks, and protons are two up quarks and one down quark. The weak force is called weak because it only operates within a teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny range, about 0.1% of the diameter of a proton. So say our neutron comes close enough to a neutrino. A positively charged W boson would travel from the neutrino to that neutron. That's the weak force, right there. The neutrino, having lost a positive boson, becomes negatively charged, turning it into an electron. And over on the neutron, meanwhile, the positive W boson encounters a down quark and changes its charge from slightly negative to slightly positive. And since neutrons and protons have a difference of just one quark flavor, this changes the neutron into a proton. With the composition of the nucleus that contained this neutron having changed, the atom itself has changed, too, into an entirely new element. If this was a carbon-14 atom with six protons and eight neutrons, through the weak force, it just decayed into a nitrogen-14 atom with seven protons and seven neutrons. And that actually happens. It happens all the time. And it's how carbon-14 dating works. So there it is. The weak force is actually able to change the identity of particles when they come very, 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 very close to each other. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow. If you would like to know more about the... Okay, so the weak nuclear force. The weak nuclear force causes the radioactive decay of certain particular atomic nuclei. As you saw, it's a carbon-14 dating. So, um, in particular, this force governs the process called beta decay, 
where a neutron breaks up spontaneously into a proton plus electron antineutrino. So here is again the equation for beta decay. We, we did this uh, before in the last video. So neutron is up, down, down. Uh, this up, down, down changed to a proton, which is up, up, down. So one down quark basically changed to an up quark. So charge is conserved and the mass of the neutrino, uh, I, uh, mass of the neutron is bigger than mass of proton in, in this conversion, in this uh, beta decay. Now all the forces can be categorized into long range force or short range force, both strong and weak nuclear force that happens inside a nucleus. So they are very short range force. In contrast, electromagnetic and gravitational, those are long range forces. Force carriers. So we know the um, bosons are force carriers and they are a kind of communicating between the particles and the commun communicating the force between them. So according to modern quantum theories, the various fundamental forces are conveyed between real particles by means of virtual particles. The force carrier particles, which are known as gauge bosons for each of the forces, are as follows. Electromagnetic, that's called photon. We use gamma for, for to represent that. A weak nuclear interaction, W and Z boson. And strong nuclear force, we use gluon. And the gravitation, we use graviton. This is why the gravity doesn't belong to uh, this uh, standard um, model is because people cannot, uh, we haven't found a graviton. Next one, the fundamental forces and their relative size. So standard model describe forces between particles in terms of exchange of virtual force carriers between them. So here are the forces. Strong nuclear force has the relative strength 10 to the 38. If we consider gravitational is one, so that's 10 to the 38 times greater than gravitational force. The next biggest one is electromagnetic force, 10 to the 36. And weak nuclear force is 10 to the 25. They are all very big. Range, the smallest range. We said a nuclear force, weak nuclear force is very, very uh, is weak is because the range is very, very small. And here is strong um, nuclear forces, range of 10 to the 50 meters, but weak nuclear forces 10 to negative 80 meters. Here are the uh, rel uh, the force carrier carriers. Luyang for strong nuclear, electromagnetic is photon, and the weak force is W boson, C boson, and uh, gravitational is graviton, which we really don't know anything about. Now let's do a couple of examples. Which force is responsible for neutron decaying into a proton? We just saw the video that is uh, decay, which is weak nuclear force. Which force bond quarks together into particles like protons and neutrons? And that is strong nuclear force. And which force governs the motion of an apple falling from a tree? That is gravity. Now, what are you made of? And what forces hold you together? So here you are sitting in a rock, you are bouncing a, a ball, right? So there are actually four fundamental forces acting on you all the time. First, you are able to sit on a rock instead of floating in air. That is due to gravitational force from the Earth. This ball falls down because gravitational force. Number two, you are made of cells, and each cell are made of atoms. The molecule is a series of atoms actually linked together by electromagnetic force. That's number two. And also inside, a new, inside an atom, electrons constantly going around the nucleus, that is also electromagnetic force. Inside each atom, there is a nucleus, which is a collection of protons and neutrons linked together that is by strong nuclear force of this sort of quarks, holding the quarks together and holding protons and protons together. And there are a small amount of uh, radioactive atoms everywhere, including in your body. So this radioactive decay is produced by weak nuclear force. So there are all forces acting on you at all times. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.